Have you got an acne that you can't seem to get rid of? Or a long-standing acne condition that you would like to treat? First, let us break down the various aspects of acne to understand it better. In today's video, I'll be talking to you about the different kinds of acne, what are its symptoms and what causes it. Acne is a disease of the pilosebaceous gland whereby pores on your scalp, your face, body, including your trunk and your chest, typically become blocked by sebum, dead skin cells, and this gives rise to bacterial proliferation within the pilosebaceous unit. And when this happens, you can develop non-inflammatory lesions known as comedones, which may be open or closed, and subsequently go on to become inflamed, such as papules, pustules, and even a severe form known as nodulocystic acne. Now, when there's a lot of inflammation, pimples may typically give rise to scarring and in these cases, there can be emotional stress. Acne, however, is a very treatable condition with many options available today. So, this downstream acne scarring can be preventable if acne is treated at the outset. When we look at acne, we can first break it down to look at the morphology of the acne lesions that we encounter. We can first classify them as non-inflammatory or inflammatory. Under the non-inflammatory category, we largely have open or closed comedones, which are your blackheads and your whiteheads respectively. Then we look at the inflammatory category, under which there would be papules, pustules, nodules, and even cysts in increasing order of severity, increasing order of inflammation. Now, that is how acne morphology typically is depicted as. We can also classify acne according to location. For example, if we consider acne on the scalp, typically it will be known as folliculitis. If we look at acne on the body, we will call it truncal acne or sometimes bagne. There's another way of classifying acne as well. We can look at acne in terms of causation. So some people may have acne that may be triggered by hormone changes and that would be hormonotype acne. In patients with hormonotype acne, they typically experience fluctuations around their menstrual cycles. So just before and after, they may have aggravation of acne or they may not have acne throughout the entire month but only have inflamed lesions around that period of time. And typically for hormonal acne, it affects the lower half of the face, typically around the chin, around the jawline. We can also look at comedonal acne as another format where typically there is a preponderance of blackheads and whiteheads and typically, this may be caused by occlusion. So if you use skincare products that may be not suitable and too occlusive by nature, you don't remove your makeup well enough, you can give rise to a lot of trapping and maybe more comedonal acne. We can also classify acne according to conditions that give rise to medication-induced steroid acne, for example. Now, in steroid acne, it can happen in two main formats. One, because of an overuse of topical steroid in an acne-prone zone, such as the face. So if you apply a steroid for an un another indication, such as maybe a facial rash, you might give rise to prolonged use of, of steroid and downstream development of monomorphic, which is singular type size acne on the face, and that would be classified as steroid acne. If you are on oral steroids, also for a protracted period of time, in terms of two to three weeks onwards, then sometimes in patients who have to be on this for medical reasons such as autoimmune problems, they may develop a lot of monomorphic acne, not just on the face, but on widespread areas on the trunk and limbs as well. There is also another well-known entity known as acne rosacea. Now, this is a slightly different category. In patients who got acne rosacea, you typically see the presentation later on in life in the 30s and the 40s, females more than males, typically presenting in four main subtypes. One of the most common subtype is papillopustular rosacea, where they get central facial acne lesions and a lot of redness and flushing symptoms as well. Now, in acne rosacea, the management is quite different from the rest of the acne conditions, largely because the skin is exquisitely sensitive at the same time and is inflammatory at the same time. As such, a lot of the regular acne topicals that we might use, such as topical retinoids, will not be suitable in patients who are afflicted with acne rosacea. Last but not least, we need to talk about mask knee because we've just lived through two and a half years of COVID and everybody has been wearing masks for like prolonged periods of time and that has given rise to the presentation of an occlusive type of acne in the lower half of the face, especially if you wear masks for many hours a day and if you wear masks that may be a little bit more occlusive like N95 masks, 
the risk might be higher as well. Acne typically happens in areas that are oil gland rich. So this happens on areas such as the scalp, the face and the neck, as well as your shoulders, back and chest. Now, individuals with acne may experience a whole host of different symptoms such as redness or post-inflammatory erythema, PIE for short. They may also experience skin discoloration such as hyperpigmentation, what we know as post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation or PIH for short. They can also experience tenderness over the swollen inflamed lesions. They can also be itching as well. And sometimes in patients, they develop a condition known as acne excori because they tend to scratch and pick out those lesions. Otherwise, acne can also give rise to some swelling in certain locations due to the underlying inflammation. Acne occurs when the pores of your skin become blocked with oil, dead skin and infested with bacteria. So firstly, there is excess or high production of oil within the pore. This can happen especially in teenage years when the oil glands start to get active due to hormonal influence. Secondly, when there is buildup of dead skin cells at the exit point of the pore or when there is also rich occlusive products or makeup use that you don't remove properly and that gives rise to trapping. Lastly, in this triad, there is then growth of bacteria or P. acne bacteria within the pore. Firstly, you can look at your family history. Now, if you have a strong family history of severe acne, and you can look at your parents and see whether they've gone on to have severe adult acne, there might just be that chance that you might not outgrow teenage acne that easily. Secondly, there is the factor of concurrent ongoing medications as well. So if you take certain medications such as steroids, there might be increased risk of developing more severe acne or steroid-induced acne as well. Thirdly, there is the factor of the hormones. As we know, acne typically starts in teenage years because we start to produce sex hormones which then go on to wake up our pyosebaceous glands. This gives rise to a proliferation of sebum production and then ensuing acne. So if there is hormonal imbalance in the form of an imbalance between your male and female hormones such as patients who've got polycystic ovarian syndrome, that can make acne more difficult to manage as well. Lastly, there is the factor of age. Now, as we know, Typically, acne starts not in childhood, but around 11 to 12 in young girls and a little bit later in boys between the ages of 14 to 15 because this is the time that oil glands start to get active as well. Factors that may aggravate acne include number one factor, stress. So if you have lived a very highly stressed lifestyle and have irregular sleeping habits, this can give rise to increased cortisol production or stress hormone production that might give rise to acne. Secondly, pay attention to your diet. Drink lots of water, at least 3 litres of water a day. Cut down on dairy products because dairy can also aggravate acne and also foods that are very sugary at the same time. Thirdly, environmental irritants. So if you get a lot of smoke, a lot of dust, in the environment, it might also aggravate acne, especially in your workplace. Fourthly, there can also be factors such as occlusion, and this can come from things like wearing a mask for very long hours, wearing makeup and not removing that properly. Fifth, if you scrub your skin too hard, this can also irritate the skin and give rise to acne formation as well. Lastly, overwashing or over drying your skin can also give rise to acne aggravation. In today's video, I've shared with you more about what acne is, what are the different kinds of acne, what are its symptoms, and what can cause acne. Stay tuned for my next video where I will share with you more about how you can manage acne.